and encourage your people to ask this magic selling question. Is this what you had in mind? Because it's one thing to walk into a shop and say, I'm looking for some razor blades. And they turn the counter and they hand you the razor, you know, and I'm saying, they're going, no, 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 I need the track, uh, the track threes. The, the three blade, that's Gillette, it's a uh, it, three, you know, I, and, you know, that's always bothered me. Why do these razor, razors have like three, four, five blades, right? When you only need one, it's kind of like those crews out there working on the road. You know, one guy is doing all the work, and the other four or five blades are just standing around going, yeah, you know, kind of watching, supervising, I guess. So ask. And never, never let your customer handle the product unless you want them to buy it. One of the places we stopped in our mystery shopping adventure was a kiosk that sold uh, cameras. And I spotted this iridescent blue handheld JVC model GZE-10A. This video camera had just been recommended to be my fellow speaker at the Malaysian uh, Professional Speakers Conference. He had one and was showing it to me. He shot some video with it. It was so small. It was so compact. It's high definition. It's, it's, it's like I, it was love at first sight. Right? So from 50 yards away, I sighted this camera on the kiosk. And I walked out and said, hey, Denise. And I picked it up. And it was, well, for one thing, it was chained to the kiosk. So I picked it up. I said, Denise, Denise, I can't believe this. Look, here's this JVC, the GZE-10A, the same one that Ray Foon was telling me about at the speaker's conference. This is, this is I want to, can I, I want to buy this camera. And immediately, the young man at the kiosk said, we'll cut the price by 200 ringgits. I said, why would he do that? I had already decided that I was going to buy it. Then and there, no questions asked. I'd already seen it, seen it demonstrated, had made up my mind. And, and I said, well, I, you know, I, and I looked at the price that was marked at 1,000 ringgits, and I'm doing the math in my head, divide by three. It was, yeah, at that price, it's a bargain already. Why would he cut the price by 20%? Just like that. I said, this is not, you know. And so I said, so I asked him, I said, well, can you, you know, can I, I'd like to, can you demonstrate it? Can you show it to Denise? He says, no, it doesn't have a battery in it. <laughs> and he reached out and he took it from my arm as if he were trying to take away the soccer ball. And put it, because he wouldn't be satisfied until it was back neatly in its place on the kiosk. And very disappointed, I walked away without buying the camera. So, make sure that they take the time to really understand what the customer wants, what they need, where they're at in their buying process. And then, the fifth, I think the most important need, is that the customer needs to feel appreciated. And a very simple way to do this is to give them something extra. The young man at Body Shop, he said, oh, you like the tea tree, the tea tree oil. I said, oh, this is, really, this is really nice for blemishes. And Denise says, oh, yeah, so what I love about this tea tree oil, this uh, moisturizing cream, is that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't cause blackheads because other moisturizers, I usually have, geez. he says, oh, if you have blackheads, well, then, then what you should try is you should try the pure tea tree oil. Here, let me, because we had already spent something like five or 600 ringgits at that point. And, and so he takes a bottle of, the price on this was, uh, Let's see, 28 ringgits, so less than $10. And he said, here. That's when I stopped breathing, right? And the last thing that Denise said as I was getting out of the car at the airport in Denver to board my flight on Monday was, make sure you stop at the body shop and get me some more of that tea tree stuff. We've actually seen studies where waitresses in food and beverage operations, here's another way that you can apply this. You know those little red and white mints that they sometimes have next to the cash register? Right, that you put a whole bowl for there. You know, and even if you've had like peppers and onions and you've, you've had like Thai food, you know, and you smell like a dragon. Right? 
and you, you really want to grab like four or five of them and put them in your pocket because you know you're going to need them later. But then you feel like a thief. So you only take one, and then it's not enough. You know, and you walk around like this all day. No, They've done studies where if, if the waitress gives not one, but two, one doesn't work nearly as well, two of those little mints with the check, when they leave the check on the table, it will approximately double their tips, about 87% increase in their tips. Now, you're going to give the minties away anyway if the wait staff actually gives them to the customer at that moment of truth when they're, right? Because sometimes a customer goes into sticker shock when they get the check. I had breakfast in Hong Kong. Two strawberry pancakes and a cup of coffee. $140! Ah. Hey. Oh, wait, it's Hong Kong, right? So instead, it's like, oh, and I get minties, too. Give them something, anything extra. It can be a coupon for when they come back. It can be uh, a, a, an applique for the makeup. It can be a, a piece of candy, it, it, anything. Something that, in, in the United States, and particularly in the South, we have a, a term for that. It's called the lanyap. And it's the little something extra that the customer doesn't expect. And then thank them at the end of the transaction. Because more often than not, the service that I've seen, and this is not it's so much true here, but in uh, other airports, uh, and I've been in airports all around the world, um, is here you go, now get the hell out of here. <laughs> you got to serve the next customer. And just, just stop and say, thank you. Thank you for visiting. Thank you for making the purchase. Please come and visit us again when you come back from Colorado. So, when you put all these things together, you really can create magic. Putting your people in a uniform, in a smile, out in front where they break the force field and give them an opportunity to cross sell, upsell, or suggest sell. And I would guess that you could easily double your retail ratios. Now, another way to track this, it only works if you keep score. Keep in mind that the average cost to bring a customer in the door can run as high as 600 ringgits. It's very, very expensive by the time you add up the, the rent and the merchandising and the floor planning and the labor, all of that is going to be very expensive. And if they come in and they don't buy something, then you've lost money on that opportunity. So find a way to track the traffic and monitor those statistics. Uh, a very simple way to do this is to put a dorm beam counter, a, a laser or a, a light beam across the, uh, the, the entrance with a counter so that every time someone breaks that beam, it, it increments the counter. And I was just talking to, this morning I was talking to Mark Gravina, I hope I said that right, who was demonstrating a video system out here in the lobby that will actually not only count how many people come and go from your store, but actually count how many of them are men, how many of them are women, whether they're coming and going. It gives you all kinds of exciting data. But you, it doesn't have to be something that elaborate. And, and you don't have to do a lot of fancy mathematics to try and, well, you know, divide by two, and then we have to subtract when the stocker came and left, when the employees came. Don't worry about all of that. Just look at your gross traffic number at the end of the day and then divide that into your revenue so that you develop some kind of formula that tracks those two against each other. It doesn't matter what the ratio is so long as it is getting better and better and better over time. And the way that you drive those numbers up is simply to post those numbers in the store daily. Make a game of it. So we, the game becomes, let's beat yesterday's ratio so that you get more people uh, as a ratio of your traffic, but buying something, anything. And then, and uh, Sharifa touched on this, uh, uh, paying incentives, cash. Uh, in the United States, we call those spiffs. When you pay a small bonus to a salesperson, maybe five ringgits, 10 ringgits, to drive those desired sales behaviors. Pay a spiff for the first sale of the day. 
because it's very easy for them to get preoccupied. You know, they roll up the gate, you know, and then they're dusting or they're cleaning or they're restocking a shelf, whatever. Those first three or four or eight or ten customers that drift into the store, they don't get the level of service that they deserve. And they, you know, they may not get any service at all. So you want to provide incentive, especially if there are multiple salespeople in the store, so that first customer gets served as they should. Pay a spiff for the biggest sale, so they have an economic incentive to upsell and cross-sell and resell. Pay an incentive for the most items in the transaction, even if and especially if the store sells a lot of small items. So that the person coming in who's just, you know, wants some razor blades, uh, they have an incentive to try and build that ticket up. That's incremental profitability for you. And also pay a bonus for the smallest sale of the day so that every single customer gets top shelf service, whether they are a big spender or, or, they, or they hate to shop. And then finally, just like in the morning, many times at the end of the day, the staff gets busy trying to clean up and close the store at the end of the day. Those customers at the tail end of the day, maybe they don't get the service they deserve either. They're like standing there with rakes, like, come on, come on, come on, get the hell out of here. I got to close, turn the lights off, you know, kick them out. Pay a spiff for the last sale of the day. And you'll find that very quickly, and these incentives can be very small, but if you pay them every day, they will drive all of these behaviors that we've talked about. This is an elegantly simple formula, but it has the power to double your revenue per square foot in a matter of weeks or a few months at the most. So there are five simple things to train and train and train and train and train and train on. Train them on greeting the customer. Train them on qualifying the customer. Train them on suggesting solutions and alternatives. Train them on cross-selling accessories or uh, other related items. And finally, on closing the sale. Just asking, the is this what you're looking for? Is there anything else I can help you find? No is an acceptable answer. Well, let me ring that up for you and get you on your way so that you can catch your flight. And if you do those five things, then you'll be standing up here on this stage just like last year's winners were and laugh all the way to the bank. That's our time. Thank you. So Mike, thank you, Mr. Wilson, and uh, that was definitely very enlightening. Thank you.